You don't remember his birthday. I'm so All right, go on, Laura. I'm supposed to uh, draw blood from him, but he's so tiny, I don't want to. Welcome to Breakfast oh. with Spain. Okay, we're going to try Dr. again. Judy Morgan. <laughs> Hey, I'm live again. <laughs> By the way, we're actually live a lot sooner than the 3 2 1 makes you think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, for those of you who keep coming back, you know, take 27. <laughs> Instagram, you just see the numbers. Minute after minute. The numbers are jumping up. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you know when Facebook has given you an oops when <laughs> you don't get as many people. Yeah, I was just going through all of my settings when something's not right. I guess I should remember to check that because it's been doing it more often than not, mm. and I don't know why. Well, I think used to the default was public, now it's supporters only. Remember, yep. you can purchase all of Dr. Morgan's products at her website at www.drjudymorgan.com. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. And enjoy cute Gabby, who has been literally sitting on that chair now for about 40 minutes while we've been trying to get equipment to work. So God bless her little heart. She's so good at sitting here. Um, so actually I have a, a rant, um, but I'm going to save it until next week because uh, I'm waiting for some lab results to come in for a friend's dog. Um, her, her dog has been losing a lot of weight, very thin, older dog. Uh, great appetite. And they ran some lab work and the dog's protein levels were a little bit low, um, which the dog's losing a lot of weight. So not a shock, uh, clearly not utilizing the food well. Um, but they, and a couple of the liver enzymes were slightly elevated. So they did an ultrasound. And when I looked at the lab work, I said, well, what did they say about the blood sugar of 41? Oh, they didn't mention that. Like, yeah, 41. That's really low. I think the dog has an insulinoma, which is a tumor of the pancreas that produces insulin. And that's why the dog is not able to um, put on any weight and is having issues. They don't agree. And I recommended a test called an amended insulin glucose ratio to help determine that. They never heard of it, so they don't wanna run it. It's a blood test, it's simple. They did an ultrasound. On the original ultrasound, it said, Pancreas not visualized. And then when we questioned that, they said, oh no, the pancreas is under the part on the report where it says all else normal. I'm like, well, if it's not visualized, how do you know it's normal? So we're still going around in circles and they're, they're barking up a different tree. They're, they're looking for protein losing enteropathy, even though the albumin they say is normal. So I don't know. When we finally get a diagnosis on this dog, then I can do my rant. But right now that's, the prequel to the rant. <laughs> you know, you, you just, you got to keep pushing for testing. You've got to keep pushing for answers. Um, yeah, shocker. Uh, it's, it's really frustrating. <clears throat> anyway, so when I came in this morning, I said, you know, there's so many products in this warehouse that we haven't talked about. And when we do the tour of the warehouse sometime coming up in the near future, um, you'll be able to see kind of everything that's in there that's that's new, but I grabbed a couple um, because we haven't talked about them at all and they're uh, things that I think are kind of important. Um, so we, from Buck Mountain, we have their, their herbal wound balm, which is really, really wonderful for hot spots, open wounds, um, sores. Uh, it is a, it's herbal, but it's a phenomenal antibacterial. When we had little Jazzy, our English toy spaniel who ate the sock and had surgery at Penn and spent 11 days in ICU, had a feeding tube. When they pulled the feeding tube, she had a horrible, nasty, nasty infection um, around the entry site of the feeding tube in her side. 
And so for the little 10 pound dog, they put her on enough, uh, let's see, I think they had her on three antibiotics, Batril, Metronidazole, and Clavamox maybe. Um, I'm going back 15 years. Uh, and they had her on doses that were appropriate for about a 120 pound dog and she was a 12 pound dog. But they said, oh, well, we need these kind of doses to, in order to take care of, hi, the infection that we have. And uh, that did not sit well with me. I absolutely could not force myself to give that tiny little dog those kinds of doses. So I said, well, we're just not gonna do that. And I used the wound balm salve on the open wound and it healed beautifully. The infection cleared up. We never used the antibiotics and it took care of all those resistant, nasty ICU bugs that she had around that feeding tube. So I'm really, I love the Buck Mountain Company, but they have this, I'm gonna put you down because I'm just afraid that you're getting a little, excuse me, a little antsy. There you go, sweetie. Go sit in your other big chair. She's just gonna sit right next to you. I know, she wants her other chair. Uh, so, but they also make this parasite dust and there's, it's for flies, fleas, ticks, lice, mites, and more. Um, and it contains neem, yarrow, and diatomaceous, well, diatom flower, which is diatomaceous earth. Uh, they have the small size and the large size. So when I first started using this small one was years and years ago, I had a terrible fly problem in my house. Um, and I would get, a, I must have had uh, big enough openings around my window screens that things just were collecting there. So I took the parasite dust and I put it on my window sills, solved the problem. We, anything that came in died. Um, but when we adopted the donkeys and hinnies from the kill pen, they came with lice. And uh, we don't see lice very often in dogs and cats, but I have actually seen cases of it. Um, and certainly we get a lot of fleas and ticks and other issues. Uh, but this worked phenomenally well to get rid of the lice on the donkeys. Um, so I think maybe once a week, we rubbed a little bit of powder through their coat. Um, and while we were working on their immune system and totally cleared them up. So uh, pretty cool stuff. You can use it in the house, um, like on rugs or uh, a play if you're having a big flea problem, there are areas in the house that sometimes get overlooked, like down in the crevices of your furniture cushions if your animals get on the furniture, um, kind of under the carpets, under the dog beds, in the corners along the edges of your carpets. Um, those are the places that get overlooked and those are great places for sprinkling this um, and it'll work really well. If you're using it on your pets, you don't need very much at all. It's a very tiny amount, goes a very long way and you wanna um, not sprinkle it where they're going to inhale it. Um, you don't want to inhale it because it does have the diatoms in it, which are, they're tiny, but they're not very friendly to the respiratory tract. <clears throat> it's kind of like inhaling chalk. Um, so we have that, which is very cool. We use a lot of it in the barn. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about, see, she wants her other chair. <laughs> uh, and this one's going to be hard to see, the eye drop vet gel. This, they say it's for severe dry eye, but the reason I love this, it, first of all, it's a very thick um, eye gel uh, and it's preservative free, but it has hyaluronic acid in it. So for those of you who have been following me, you know that our little George, when we, he's our other English toy, the black and tan, when we adopted him, he came with severe dry eye and uh, he was rescued out of the puppy mill with his brother. Paul, and Paul got adopted very quickly. George did not get adopted for nine months because in all of his pictures, he had goopy, gunky eyes from his dry eye. So when we adopted him, he was on medication for his eye and we, I, that's when we developed our dry eye diet, which worked beautifully for him. After three months, he was off all medications. His, his eyes worked beautifully. However, now in his old age, he's about 13 now, his dry eye has reappeared a little bit, but that's not his biggest problem. His biggest problem is he can't blink because he has paralysis, facial paralysis. So his left eye, he can't blink. So if we don't put drops in that eye about 10 times a day, the, the front of the eye, the cornea dries out. And hyaluronic acid is the 
uh, best treatment that I've found. Uh, he also gets tacrolimus once a day, so we are using a true medication um, for inflammation. But hyaluronic acid is phenomenal. And the nice thing about this gel is that it lasts longer. So when you put a, a, a water-based uh, drop, like an antibiotic drop in your pet's eye, it really only lasts for about 15 minutes. So if you have a pet with dry eye, particularly one who can't blink, like our little George, and you want something that you're not, nobody in the world is going to put drops in their pet's eye every 15 minutes. So this will last a lot longer um, and give you a lot longer period of time. So George gets hyaluronic acid acid drops in his eyes about three times a day. He gets an antibiotic drop because he has developed MRSA bacteria in his eyes um, and it's from the chronic exposure. Um, so he gets an antibiotic drop a couple times a day and then he gets his tacrolimus once a day. So yes, every time George looks at me, he gets drops in his eyes. <laughs> um, but that is available. So for those of you who have uh, pets with dry eye, particularly um, because this is a very thick gel, using it at bedtime, uh, is really good because they're not going to blink and uh, make the tears move around the eye and wash the eye as well overnight. So that's a good time to use the hyaluronic. Teresa wants to know if that gel would work okay for an eye that has had a keratotomy. Yes. Yeah, keratotomy. Uh, I think that's for, for Joe. Uh, yeah, I love this stuff. I First of all, the hyaluronic acid is healing to the eye. So it, it's, a nat, it's a natural substance in the body. It's found in our joints, in our eyes, um, in our skin. But as we age and as they age, we produce less of it. And what we produce isn't, isn't as good or as effective. So uh, it's a great replacement. And uh, the, the reason we like the deer antler velvet uh, the senior formula and the wellness formula is because the deer antler is a natural source of hyaluronic acid. So we're giving it internally as well as for the eyes, we can apply it topically. So good stuff. Okay. Um, somebody was asking David C on the friends of page this morning. He uh, stopped putting eggshells in his pup loaf and instead switched over to the canine minerals. Now's dogs are having a little bit of slimy stool. He described it as gelatinous, but that's basically mucus, which means there's a little bit of inflammation. So the question is, are they um, having a bit of a reaction to the minerals where they didn't have a problem with the eggshells? Uh, saving and grinding eggshells is another step of work. Um, and sometimes you don't have enough eggshells to keep up with the amount of uh, powder that you would need to to use in your homemade meals. Um, so we found, and this is um, also good for dogs with kidney failure where we want to have the calcium, but we don't want to increase phosphorus. We have an egg shellant calcium. So it's a high calcium, low phosphorus addition for the meals. Um, and it's a really fine, finely ground powder. And I believe it is organic. Shells are pasteurized, then ground in a chemical-free process to an ultra-fine powder. Um, so much more surface area for digestion than calcium carbonate from inorganic sources. Uh, free of concerns about mad cow disease associated with bovine bone meal. Um, and doo -doo -doo, there's one scoop has 1900 milligrams. Um, so, and each scoop contains 650 milligrams of calcium. So one scoop of this would be appropriate for a pound of meat in your recipes, because we say to give anywhere from 500 to 750 milligrams of calcium. So, so we have the eggshell and calcium, very fine powder. If you don't feel like grinding your own eggshells or if you don't have enough, uh, or if your pet has reacted in the past to the canine minerals. We do have some animals that will get softer stools or loose stools with the minerals. It's a very small percentage, but if yours is one of them, this is a, a good um, substitute. One good question is, um, could the excellent calcium be used for cats that have the uh, chronic kidney disease? Yes, because it's 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 not going to be supplying phosphorus. It's a, it's a low phosphorus source. I and mean, in the kidney disease, that's what we have to be careful of. We want to keep our our phosphorus levels low, but we still want to supply the calcium that they need for their bones. So yes. 
It'd be very good. All right, so this one is not a new one, but I brought this one because we're gonna talk about something related. So this is our unique pet odor and stain remover. Um, neat thing about this product is this is an empty bottle and this is your concentrate. And I believe this is a enzymatic product, Gwen? Yes. Um, so you're not paying shipping weight on liquid. Uh, you take this bottle, put it in this bottle and add water and that makes your product to remove uh, stains and odors. And the the thing with it is it, it doesn't cover up the odor because it, that'll eventually come back. This actually, com the molecules combine and the enzyme actually degrades that urine protein odor. Um, so great product. But we also have a new second P and stain odor destroyer um, made with essential oils. And this one is from Kin and Kind. Stain free, odor free, non toxic. Um, and again, it's uh, breaking things down. It's got a zinc salt in it and then sweet orange peel oil. So it's a citrus. So again, it's destroying the odor mo molecules, not covering them up. Uh, interesting, it's got coconut soap and banana enzymes <laughs> to clean and protect. So when you're looking at stain and odor removers, you want to use products that are actually going to break, da break down the uh, protein molecules in the urine so that you're actually destroying the odor, not covering it up. Um, so those are just a few of the new products that are in the warehouse. There's so much stuff. Um, and, uh, for those of you uh, who saw our post on the pet plates, yes, move over Billy Hookman. I'm having fun making cool meals and taking pictures on my pet plates. <laughs> A little bit different. Um, we did have another question about the eye gel. Sure. Um, someone asked if it would be good to use in a dog that has issues with its third eye, it, it's third eye sticking. I'm guessing they're talking about the eyelid. The third eyelid sticking up? Yeah. Well, it's going to be soothing. I mean, the problem with if you have a, um, a cherry eye, which is basically that gland of the third eyelid sticks up, um, if you have a dog with problems with that and you don't have it surgically repaired, uh, that mucous membrane of the cherry eye, the part that's sticking up there, it gets dried out and it's very uncomfortable for the pet. So yes, that would help because it's going to lubricate it um, and keep it from sticking to the cornea and being more of an issue for the pet. So yeah, if you're not gonna have it surgically repaired, then I would be using something to make that eye more comfortable. Cause it's more of like a, like a lubricant. Than it's a it lubricant, but it's also- a medication. Right, it's a lubricant, but it also is supplying basically a nutrient that the eye needs for good for good tear film and good eye health. So that's what the hyaluronic acid does. Okay, let's right. make sure we didn't miss anyone on. Okay. Um, will the eye drops help with the dark stains that they get under their eyes? Unknown. It's certainly not marketed for that. Um, Thought the giant coffee mug was one of the new items. Oh no, this was a gift from my office manager at Clayton. It says, she who must be obeyed. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Wizard of Oz thing, but it, you know, she who must be obeyed, that would be me. Um, will it help with itchy eyes from allergies? Yes. And all of these things are on our website, drjudymorgan.com. Hey, Melanie Mocos, how are you? One of my classmates. <laughs> oh, that's fun. We could have a whole reunion if she comes here. We'll have Bob and Colin and oh, yeah. you and... Yeah, Melanie, by the way, Colin's moving to this area too. And Bob Meyer is our equine vet. So, you know, <laughs> small world. <laughs> it's a class. It's a vet I, school I class she's reunion. she's in South Carolina. <laughs> Us East Coast people. Yeah, we, can, we could have a reunion. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Right. Okay, uh, somebody asked if these products can be used on porcelain and ceramic, uh, the cleaners. I think so. I mean, I would certainly test the little corner first, um, but I don't think there should be an issue with that. This is bleach alternative. So I don't know. Made without phosphates, phthalates, parabens, ammonia, chlorine, formaldehyde, triclosan, and artificial colors. There you go. 
All right. Um, okay, everybody have a wonderful day. Uh, supporters, I posted, we're going to do 6.30 tomorrow evening. Um, I'll have to go in and look and see if anybody gave me a really cool topic that I feel like making a PowerPoint on or if we're just going to uh, do and ask me anything. We'll figure it out. All right, everyone have a great day.